Danielle, should we get going? I think so. It's 201. I think we'll get started. And as people pop in, that's fine. We'll let them in. All right, great. Hello, RIT, and welcome to Red Argyle's info session with um, all of us. There's a bunch of us. We're all going to talk to you, and we have an agenda coming up in the next slide. But my name is Becca Petros, and I am the finance and Argler Ops manager here. Our goal during this presentation is to introduce you to the experience, uh, the co-op experience here at Red Argyle. We, of course, think it's second to none, and uh, we hope that you agree by the end. We also know that you guys are taking part in a lot of these different sessions with a ton of different companies, and we really appreciate your time today. Um, thank you so much for choosing us to spend an hour every afternoon with. We appreciate it. Also, quick shout out to everybody behind the scenes here today. Shannon, Barno, we appreciate what you're doing. And also, Danielle, I know you're presenting, but you're also presenting the, all the slides. So thank you so much. Um, we are moving forward in our slides with our internal normal uh, word, which is boop. So Danielle, boop, please. So we're going to start today after me with Nate Stevens, our Director of Engineering. He heads up the development practice and uh, we'll have tons of great info for you. After that, we thought it made sense to talk to some of our current co-ops and then um, co-ops that we have hired. And then finally, Tom Petros, our founder and CTO, will be talking as well. Following Tom, we'll have a Q&A session. The Q&A session is going to be um, completely populated with questions that you guys can post to the um, Hangout chat that's located in the upper right corner of your um, screen. So anytime during anyone's presentation a question comes to mind or you want to hear more about something that someone's talking about, just pop something in there, and when we get to Q&A, um, Danielle will help kind of facilitate all those questions and make sure they get answered. We want to make sure that your questions are answered. That's our number one concern here. All that said, I'm going to hand it over to Nate. Like I said, he's our Director of Engineering and also a former Tiger. Go ahead. Take it away, Nate. Great. Thanks, Becca. Um, yeah, so I came through RIT as well, went through the computer science program, uh, had a great experience there, worked a lot with the MAGIC program as well, uh, and had a concentration in computer graphics, actually. So I did a lot of fun game stuff, and uh, but I ended up landing here with Red Argyle. I'm really glad I, I this is where I'm at. Uh, boop. Uh, so who is Red Argyle? Uh, we were founded in 2010 by Tom Petros and later joined by Gary Pometeer. Uh, right here in Finger Lakes, upstate New York, we have an office in Canandaigua, right in the downtown beautiful city of Canandaigua. And then we have a, another office uh, in Albany, uh, just outside of Albany. Um, but with COVID and even before COVID, a lot of our us arglers uh, have always had the option to work remote. Um, so that's always been an option. Uh, we're a Salesforce partner, so we work with Salesforce. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Uh, they're a huge uh, multi-billion dollar revenue company. Uh, we're a partner with them, so we build apps on top of their platform uh, for a number of other organizations, a number of our clients. Uh, the Salesforce industry is growing like crazy. Uh, they predict 4.2 million jobs by 2024 just within the Salesforce ecosystem, uh, which is we're a part of that ecosystem. Uh, Red Argyle, we're we're lean and mean, and we're growing. Uh, so we're well, we got a team of thirteen developers right now. Uh, we're con continuing to grow. I think Red Argyle as a whole, uh, we're at about 30, 30 of us right around there. So uh, thirteen of those thirty are developers. So uh, we're we're a tech heavy place, a bunch of nerds. I, I say nerds with great pride because I am one. Um, and we work with some cool clients. I'll get to more, more of that later, but we work in uh, two of the verticals that we're really focusing on are like high tech businesses. Uh, who doesn't love high tech? And we're also uh, working within the life sciences uh, vertical as well, uh, pharma, biotech, et cetera. 
Boop. So Red Argyle and RIT. Uh, so I remember actually talking to Tom at a career fair many years ago. So our Red Argyle has been around, uh, hanging out in the, you know, at, at the RIT campus uh, for co-ops. We've had 16 over the past three years, nine have been hired. Uh, and for us, you know, when we're looking for full-time employees, we're looking for our co-ops. We like to, to grow together. And then, you know, when your co-op ends and your, your career at, R, at RIT ends, uh, just to stay with us. And we've had a hundred percent job acceptance rate uh, for, for those that have received offers. So, boop. So what does a Salesforce developer do? Uh, so first and foremost, uh, we're team members. So we work with uh, a number of other disciplines, uh, consulting and project management in particular. Uh, we get to be very tech focused ourselves, uh, really kind of owning some of the technical implementations of the products that we're building and the apps. Uh, but we work with uh, administrators or configurators, we call them, uh, consultants, uh, which are really kind of doing the requirements analysis and, and really working with our clients. Uh, from there, we get into the nitty gritty of uh, probably what you're used to at RIT, right? We're, we do a lot of object-oriented programming. Uh, we work on an, uh, an architecture. It used to, be, used to be an MVC architecture, but now it's shifted a little bit with the modern uh, JavaScript uh, updates, et cetera. So we're now doing MVCC. We got a controller on the front and the back end. Um, you know, we get into enterprise design patterns. So Salesforce is a really large, uh, they have a really intricate and large architecture that we're working within. Uh, they call it multi-tenant. Uh, if you want some really detailed white papers to go read, take a look at Salesforce's uh, database design white paper. But anyways, we're all on a shared infrastructure. And with that, we have to work within some constraints. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, right, memory was a constraint. Well, for us, runtime is a constraint and CPU time is a constraint. And, you know, how many records we can throw into the database and how many we can pull out. We have to work within uh, some of those constraints. And, and also, right, we're working on product teams. So how do you scale and build these larger products? Uh, this is something that we're discussing in our everyday lives at Red Argyle. Uh, and, Working on the Salesforce platform, uh, unit testing and test-driven development is is key. We can't deploy our code unless it's uh, you know has test code to back it up. So we are software engineers and test. I ideally, for all of our features, we're writing test code. Uh, and Salesforce is and has its own database implementation. So we are very often working with a lot of data and updating the database design and uh, really architecting the database design for new clients as well. That's what we do in the life of a day, in the day of a life. I can't talk, anyways. Boop. <laughs> uh, so languages and frameworks. So at RIT, you learn and get to play around with a bunch of different languages. At Red Argyle, we work with a lot of pretty much the same thing that you already have worked with most likely. So we do a lot of JavaScript. Uh, I think it's right now it's on ECMAScript six or seven uh, that we're currently working with on the Salesforce's uh, front end framework. Uh, we on the back end and really anything that's interacting with the database, back end logic, et cetera, is we're working what's called Apex, which is the equivalent to what you know as Java or uh, C sharp. Um, strongly typed. Uh, they give us some nice boundaries, and actually it has uh, database support directly within the language, so you're not using some ORM or, or something else to try and query languages. You're, you're doing it directly with Apex. Uh, and the format of that uh, query language is called SQL, which is Salesforce object query language versus SQL. Uh, very similar to SQL. Uh, has different relationships, ways of traversing relationships versus joins. Uh, but if you know SQL, you, you would know SQL pretty well. Uh, from an architecture framework perspective, uh, so we get into, we get knee deep in the LWC is what we say. Uh, so Lightning Web Components. Uh, if you've written anything in Vue.js, very, very similar. Uh, React.js, some differences there, uh, but 
if you've worked with either one of those two front end frameworks, you pretty much have worked in Salesforce's front end framework. Uh, nice thing about Apex and what Salesforce gives us, as I mentioned, with like being a software engineer and test, uh, you know, if you're working on a Java backend or other backends, right, you're going to have this these testing frameworks or mock frameworks that you have to work with, etc. Salesforce gives us that right to us in Apex. And then as far as what database we're working in, you know, you might know Postgres, MySQL, MySQL or other NoSQL uh, databases. Uh, Salesforce has their own implementation. It's really built on top of Oracle uh, relational database, uh, but they use like Salesforce objects and they call them fields, uh, which are the equivalent to columns. Um, yeah, so those are the, the languages and frameworks that we work with. Boop. So how co-ops fit into our practice? Uh, so our co-ops are client facing. Um, you know, communication skills are huge to us. We get to, you know, we allow you to be front facing with our clients, interacting with them. Uh, you'll talk to some of our, you know, full-time developers now and co-ops that are doing requirements gathering and analysis really daily with some of our clients. Uh, we have stand-ups with our clients that you'll be on, et cetera. Uh, you get into our full product app development lifecycle, and you will get into technology. You might be the first Augular to really dive into an implementation on a technology. And out of that, you get to write some blog posts and, and share your knowledge and uh, you know get the credit well-deserved for diving into a new tech. Uh, we also have a lot of internal projects. Uh, we have some tooling that we build internally, uh, whether it be DevOps, whether it be project management related, et cetera. Uh, so we have a lot of kind of internal tools that right now, uh, every other Friday, we take we take an afternoon of just focusing on internal uh, dev projects that we need to work on or just internal dev team items. Uh, so then we're making sure we're taking care of our health as a dev team. Uh, and really, we get to go order, order and eat good food on that day and just hang out as a team. That's probably the, the number one thing out of it. But uh, yeah, and then the clients we work with. So uh, we work with some of the coolest high tech, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Uh, they are most like they are in your house. You know them. Uh, I can't tell you who they are, but they're really cool, and uh, we get to work with them. So uh, it's it really is something else working with some of these high caliber clients, especially just being a, a really lean, uh, fun shop. You know, lo located here in Rochester or just outside of Rochester. Um, yeah, and as I said, Dev Fridays, uh, we have Dev Services. So we have uh, really within the Dev practice, the, the 13 of us right now, uh, going to be more once some of you join. Um, we have four practices across uh, code standards, DevOps, architecture and documentation. And then also we have what's called our RAD library, the Red Argyle Development Library, which is really uh, our product library of building reusable uh, properly architected uh, components that multiple of our clients can use. Um, so that is all that you will get into at Red Argyle. Boop. And just to wrap up here, uh, our culture. So Red Argyle, uh, we really try to stand behind, you know, just being a good organization, bringing us together as a team. We are people. Um, yeah, and just going through some of these pictures here, you can see in the top left, all of us hanging out. So this is just a couple couple meters, yards away from our office. So one thing that we love to do, especially in the nice weather, we live in, you know, we work out of Canadigua. So uh, we go on dev walks. Sometimes we'll walk down to the lake. Um, here we just, we walked around the block and then we hang out at this uh, outdoor area. And we were talking about our dev services, just hanging out outside together as a team. Um, we order ridiculous amounts of food usually before we take these walks. So we take the walk so we don't fall asleep after eating. Um, but uh, yeah, we just do a lot of fun stuff together as a team. Uh, you know, go-kart racing, we have, you know, holiday uh, events, et cetera. And that's where you get to see our two founders in the top right there in their shiny jackets. Um, that's like a Salesforce inside joke, but uh, yeah, we have, uh, you know, we, we celebrate the women that work in tech at our company as well. Uh, that's a huge and very important thing to us. Uh, and then, you know, we're very dog friendly. There you can see Tom and Shiloh. Shiloh's often in the office with us. 
and he'll hop on your lap if you so let him. So, uh, boop. Okay, thank you so much, Nate. Um, we thought it would be a great idea for our audience here to hear from current uh, and hired co-ops. Uh, my name is Danielle, by the way. I'm the Argler Ops Coordinator here, but I'm just going to be asking some questions almost on your behalf as an audience for these guys to see what it's like to work here. So we're going to take a couple of seconds for everyone to introduce themselves. Is Dan around? Yes, I'm Dan. I'm a computer science major at RIT. Uh, my expected graduation year is 2022, and I've been at Red Argyle for just under two years now. Awesome. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Melissa Gould. I'm a current fifth year software engineering major, so I'll graduate in May. I've been at Red Argyle for about a year, and then at RIT, I'm also involved in women in computing as well as the RIT softball team. Hi, I'm Kobe Arndt, computer science major. I'm supposed to graduate in 2023. I've been at Red Argyle for about two months now, and I'm also on eboard in the computer science house at RIT. Awesome, thanks guys. So can you each tell me what drew you to Red Argyle when you were looking for a co-op? For me, um, I already had some Salesforce experience while I was starting to look around for my co-op. And I saw Red Argyle and they popped out because they were working in a Salesforce consulting and stuff. And as I was going through the interview process, I saw how much uh, client, how much the client was involved in their uh, process every day through the week. Um, and I really liked that and I wanted that client interaction for me. Yeah, for me, it's funny. Um... My father's actually, uh, he runs the television station and I was able to work on the proprietary CRMs and Salesforce started as a, C as a CRM. So I was super excited to see like where I can take my skills that I learned and apply it here at Salesforce and Red Argyle. Um, and I didn't have any experience. I had no idea what Salesforce was even coming on. Um, I had a friend who worked here at the time. Uh, he told me a lot of great things and I was excited to learn some new stuff. Um, he also mentioned that there were dogs, so uh, that was another bonus that drew me in. Always a bonus. What do you guys think your biggest accomplishment has been uh, as a co-op here at Red Argyle? Um, I can start with this. I feel my biggest accomplishment so far is being able to implement features for clients already. Like. I am two months in, I am working on real projects. Like it's not gonna be an interim project that you're working on like other companies do. Like you are working on real things right away. And that is a amazing thing to do. For me, uh, we received a client who was previously working with one of our competitors and they came to us because uh, the old competitor had done a poor job. And so we received their client or their org in a poor state of work. And so I was really able to refactor it and completely understand what was going on in the org and make it so that we could be adding new features and things and really get it up to speed with our standards. And so like that was a lot of fun. And then it became my main development project for the rest of my time while I was full time at Red Argo. Um. For me, my biggest accomplishment is probably just the amount of stuff that I've learned while working here. Um, I went from not knowing anything about Salesforce to being a certified Salesforce JavaScript developer um, in the two years that I've been here. That's so awesome, guys. Can you tell me a little bit more about your professional development? How has your professional development improved since working at Red Argyle? Um, for me, so Red Argyle is my first professional uh, coding job. So just all around my skills have been improved um, and my professional development has been improved. Um, I'd say I'm much more comfortable working on a team, uh, discussing that work with clients and even doing the coding itself. Uh, just a lot more comfortable there. My professional development has also greatly increased since working at Red Argyle. I am much more comfortable with like various client interactions and would even feel comfortable running my own client meeting. Um, I've also gotten a much better understanding of designing backend systems and features, as well as understanding like code that's unfamiliar to me so that I'm seeing it for the first time and can quick get a grasp on it. 
Yeah, my professional development has been improved greatly since starting here. The work I get is challenging, but very rewarding in the end. And also being in an environment that is very supportive and wants to see you grow as a person, as a developer is amazing as well. That's so cool to hear from each of you. Um, could you guys tell me the process of development? What's the process of development like? So generally we work in two-week sprints. Um, so we'll get requirements directly from the client at the start of that sprint, start working on that, and then demo it later in that first week, get some client feedback, continue working on it. Um, it's really great to receive that feedback directly from the client while you're actively still working on it and then can deploy it out uh, for the customer to start using at the end of the two week sprint. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so for all of you, what would be your favorite part of Red Argyle's culture? Um, so I'll, I'll start here. So as I mentioned, uh, there were, there's dogs. <laughs> so that's definitely one of my favorite parts. But in general, um, I'd say that just overall Red Argyle is an awesome company to work for. Everyone does amazing work. Um, and I feel super fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, I guess a specific example I could give is um, there were a couple occasions where the dev team has gotten together after work to play some video games together. Um, and that's just really cool to me. And yeah, as I said before, just how supportive the environment is, you will not find this anywhere else. It is amazing. For me, it's been the people. Um, everyone has their various different interests and there's a lot of overlap between each of us. So like, it's very nice to be talking about our interests that are outside of work. Um, also, our flexibility. Um, at last semester, I was working part time for Red Argyle while also playing softball and going to school. Um, so that was really nice. And then I also really like everyone's drive to get good quality work out the door to our customer. Awesome. Last question for you guys is what is your involvement in real client based projects look like? So um, I would say, so for me, the project team that I work on, um, it's a small-ish team. Uh, we get together daily and we go over the requirements, uh, check the statuses of the current tasks people are working on, discuss any blockers that we're having. Um, and then we also get into uh, daily stand-ups with the project stakeholder, um, the client themselves, to discuss similar things as well as any of the upcoming tasks that we have, any new tasks um, that are being assigned to us. Um, that mixed with the two week sprints that uh, Melissa mentioned. Um, and we do a lot of code reviews and pull requests. I can't really add much to that because I'm on the same team as Dan. <laughs> um, for me, it's very nice to have like a face and a name for a client rather than just kind of like a headless consumer that we're just randomly making work for. Um, so that's a very nice interaction to have. Awesome. Well, thank each of you for sharing so much about your time here at Red Argyle. We are going to move on to the hired co-ops, but each of these folks will be available at the end when we do Q&A. So if you have a question specific to anything anyone just mentioned, you can pop it in the box or a general question as well. OK. so. Our hired co-ops, we'll just take a minute for everyone to introduce themselves. Grant, are you around? Yep. Hi, I'm Grant. I'm a CS major that I graduated at the end of last year. I've been working at Red Argyle for about uh, almost two and a half years now, actually. Awesome. My name is Benjamin Mitchell. Um, it's nice to virtually meet everyone. Um, I've been a developer at Red Argyle for about three and a half years, full time for about a year and a half. Um, I did both of my co-op uh, blocks here, and I graduated in spring of 2019 uh, with a degree in computer science. Hi, I'm also Ben, Ben Vogler. Um, I started as a co-op January 2018, so about three years here. Uh, I graduated in software engineering this May and oh. started full time. Awesome. So I have some questions for you guys, too. Can you tell me why you decided to stay at Red Argyle after completing your co-op program? 
Um, yeah, so I felt like I had a lot more to learn. So I spent a lot of time here, but every day I learned something new. Um, and after ending with RIT, um, I was like, let's go back. There's more to learn. I, and um, Red Argyle, as a consultancy, you encounter so many different projects um, every day, every week, every month. You see something new. So it, it's a changing environment. And that's what I, I was kind of drawn to. Uh, I really very much enjoyed the projects that I was working on and the people I was working with. Uh, there was a lot of interesting and engaging work, and there was uh, pretty much everyone I, I enjoy working with all the time. So it's great to be able to keep working with the same people. Uh, I definitely agree with everything Ben and Grant just said. And the opportunity to work part-time during school with a company who's flexible about your hours and understands that school comes first was one of a kind. Very, very nice offer. So uh, it was a no-brainer for me. That's awesome. Can you guys take me through a little bit of a typical day at Red Argyle? Yeah, so I would say there really isn't a typical day because like Ben mentioned, we see a lot of projects that are very different. For example, right now I'm basically working as a UX designer full time, which has never been a part of my job in the last three years. So it's definitely, uh, you know, depending on what project you're on, that kind of dictates what your day is, but it could change in a month. Um, for me, that's, that's a huge plus because, you know, you're not really stuck in a monotony. Yeah, I have to agree with pretty much everything Ben said. So depending on what projects you're on and what part of the project life cycle those are at, you can be doing something different every day. Some days um, you could be doing 90% of your days to busy your dev work. Uh, some days it might, sometimes it might be like a few days that you can go without coding uh, and you're doing either support or documentation or uh, so many other things um, that we do. But certainly there's, there's plenty of dev work um, or regular meeting with customers and documenting and testing. That's huge too. Awesome. How do you guys work with co current co-ops today? So I found myself in a, a pretty unique position. I, I generally do a lot of the greeting of a new co-op and I help train them for the first few weeks. And I'm really side by side with a lot of our, our co-ops. Um, you know, just, just working through some basic material, learning the platform. Um, eventually, they quote unquote leave the nest and go to an actual project. Um, and, and that some times can happen within the first week. Um, they can get assigned to real work. And um, they start working, they start learning from the full time devs, the, the current co ops that have experience with that client, uh, with that org, or, or whatever work they're doing. Um, so they'll learn a lot from there. And I actually have one of the, the co ops that I helped train a little bit. He's working with me on a project, and he's in, incredibly helpful. I'm, I'm super grateful for everything that he does. Um, and, and really, he has a lot of impact on what is, is, is being developed for the org. Um, and it's not you know, just the help that I receive. Um, you know, I was a student, too, and I'm, I'm still a student of the co-ops in this you know, philosophical way. I, I learned so much from the co-ops that come in. Um, you guys are knowing or learning the most recent stuff coming through RIT, and uh, we, are, we are blessed with that as it comes to us every time we get a new co-op. Yeah. Um, for me, like, I'm not currently working with any co-ops, but we're all part of the same dev team. It's a very uh, young group of people with similar interests, a lot of hanging out, and, uh, you know, those Friday afternoons where we're supposed to be working don't always turn into working, but, uh, yeah. Awesome. So how have you guys grown since your RIT co-op? Uh, I'd say the biggest thing for me is communication skills. Uh, I came on as a uh, very timid and nervous uh, dude who just wanted to write some code. Um, but I've really had a lot of opportunity experience to uh, improve my communication skills, both you know with with the people I'm working with, um, either trying to help them or get help myself, 
and with customers, um, being able to meet with someone I've never met before and be able to like follow, understand, and sometimes even like lead a meeting um, and get through a project is been super beneficial. Yeah, I definitely, same thing as Grant. Being able to get on a call with a client and not drop mom spaghetti everywhere is uh, <laughs> the biggest skill that I got. And um, uh, I would say like the, the the most shocking thing to me after my first co-op was like how much better I was at writing code. Like doing that all day, 40 hours a week is something you will never learn in school. Uh, and it was a great experience. Oh, definitely. And, um, you know, there's there's growth with understanding stuff that school can't really teach you to. There's um, <clears throat> how enterprise technology really works behind the scenes. Um, and sometimes being surprised at <clears throat> that it actually works um, with the, the duct tape and, and glue that sticks everything together. Um, how it's iterated on how, how that process works and how it's not just code, but um, more angles involved too. Um, I've gained new skills along the way. Um, I've, I've really started to hone in on or trying to figure out how to delegate work um, whenever there's you know a really big task, you've, you've got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, I've got co-ops that, um, like I said before, work really alongside with me and other projects too. Um, and they're like chewing it, uh, chomping at the bit, trying to get uh, a, a ton of work done and um, getting them that work in a uh, sustainable form is something that I've started to learn. Um, I'm also growing a lot professionally, trying to figure out um, along the way, you know, being more confident on uh, technical details and, and conveying those with clients over a call and being able to um, translate that to, uh, you know, business speak as well. Wow, that's so awesome. So knowing all of that and where you guys came from and where you are now, what advice would you give to your younger self before starting your co-op at Red Argyle? For me, I would say relax. I think that process of finding your first co-op and even starting your first co-op, it can be stressful. Um, the most important thing to remember, especially like once you're on the job, is like no one is expecting you to be an all-star on day one. You know, you're allowed to make mistakes and learn and grow, and that's kind of the entire point of the process. And I think you know our role as a company participating in the co-op program is to support you in that. And I see that every day when uh, people interact with co-ops here. So take it easy. Yeah, I, definitely similar idea for me. Uh, I know when I came on, I did my interview with uh, Ben Mitchell um, and I and with Tom, and I was a complete nervous wreck during my interview. Um, but ultimately, I didn't have to be because despite that, they understand. Like Ben said, they saw that I had enough understanding that I could do the work and. They put their trust in me, um, so I guess ultimately, uh, stuff works out. Um, don't don't freak out about everything. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and a little bit about that that interview too. Um, we were in a class at the same time. Like, we, yeah, I was. I, I, I recognize him from my class. He he yeah. sat like, three seats next to me. Didn't even know. <laughs> I, I could not could not have told you that at the time. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's also happened with uh, Shahab, another one of our. Um, hired co-ops. He was sitting right in front of me in one of, I think it was uh, co-pads or bro pads because it was with it was with Brown. Anyway, I digress. Um, back to the question. <laughs> I'm right in line with these other guys. Don't stress too much. Um, you know, it's just work. There's always work to do, <clears throat> and it's it's you know just stress enough so that you can you know keep learning, keep pushing yourself. Um, but you know there is too much. You you can go too far and there's that factor of you do get your first co-op, you get onboarded, you have no idea what's going on, completely blind. Um, imposter syndrome takes over, you start feeling out of place, completely normal. Everyone here went through it. And that's something that you just got to power through, keep learning. Um, you know, even if you have to, if you feel like you need to, after work, you, you get down and you get to start doing some, some trailheads um, until you fall asleep. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that you have to do sometimes to 
um, you know, really start to learn and, and start to understand how how work um, happens. And Red Argyle supports our co-ops in doing that. They supported me greatly. Um, I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> when I first came on board, um, but there was a lot of support and learning involved. And um, our goal is to give you periodic feedback to promote that growth. That's awesome. Um, so this is the last question I have for you guys. What makes Red Argyle a great place to work? So I would say the biggest thing for me would be the actual like leadership of the company, um, specifically our CEO and CTO, who you'll hear from Tom shortly. Very uh, transparent people. You know, I feel like I could pull them aside at any minute and give them feedback and they would do something about it tomorrow. And I think that was also true three years ago as a brand new co-op. Um, so it's a very, uh, I think there's a lot of trust both ways and it's a company that cares about personal and professional growth of every employee. So For I feel sure. valued here. Yeah, <clears throat> there, there's a lot of transparency from, from those up top and we really start to see, we see the whole picture here. Um, we see everyone's doing uh, good work um, there's also a lot of flexibility. I found that you know if you've got to you know take your vehicle in to get something done to it, you can work around it. You can kind of work it in, it in the evening a little bit. You can you can even work till midnight. We have someone who works three a.m. sometimes because you know the amount of work that they want to get done, the amount of time that their schedule permits, and and how they work is just different. Um, and also we have a huge impact here. Whatever you do is going to be used. We don't throw stuff away. Um, you do work you you know put time towards it um it's likely going to end up in the hands of a client um or or we'll you know work through it and um, refactor and get it to the point where it does get used because that's the way that you know we've done that here we have a we have an impact i definitely have to say that there's a lot of respect that's both given and shown by everyone here uh, and it shows up in a lot of different ways like um, Ben Mogler said there's a lot of uh, transparency and there's a lot of flexibility uh, that they that were given um, and it's very fortunate to have that and it's also shown with people being just kind and helpful pretty much all the time I know I've asked for help from so many different people all the time and I've always been able to get it because everyone here is super supportive of each other Awesome. Thank you guys so much for giving a little bit of perspective on working here at Red Argyle. I'm, I'm sure our audience has a better idea now what it's like to be a developer, be a Salesforce developer and, and start a co-op. So if anyone in our audience has a question for these guys or our current co-ops, please pop it in the chat box and we'll be sure to address your question at the end of the presentation. Um, so we've heard a lot about Tom so far, so I'm gonna pass it off to him and we'll hear a little bit from him. Man, I got a lot longer hair now than that video in, in both directions, I guess. Um, that was my pre-COVID haircut. So um, <clears throat> good to meet everybody here virtually. Thank you so much for, for coming to the session. Um, my name is Tom Petros. I, uh, I founded Red Argyle back in 2010, almost 10 years ago. In fact, I've got a meeting this afternoon to talk about what we're going to give to everybody for 10 year anniversaries and um, life size mannequins of themselves seems to be pretty high in the running. So hopefully that'll be, uh, you know, that'll be the winner. Um, Grant seems really excited about that. So um, I won't, I won't delve into the history, you know, in a, in a day by day, but um, suffice to say, I, I, I started the shop in, in 2010 um, with no intention of getting into the Salesforce space. I was, uh, I've got a background in design and information architecture, and I thought I was going to organize all the world's information, but it just so happens that I've got about 10 years of experience working on the Salesforce platform prior to that. So I really am the old fart in the room here, just to say it out loud. Um, I started Red Argyle and days later, people started knocking on the door asking for Salesforce help. So, you know, you kind of move in the direction that the wind blows when, uh, when you're starting a new business. So much so that a year later, I really couldn't handle the work that was coming in. And uh, my business partner, Gary Palmatier, uh, who I had worked with uh, on Salesforce projects as both a customer and as a coworker in the in the past, uh, he joined me a year later. And uh, Gary's really the consulting yin to my development yang. I'm kind of a tech nerdy guy like all the rest of you. Um, 
since then, I guess in you know nine short years later, uh, here we are with almost 40 people at Red Argyle in this uh, super vibrant co-op program, which I got to say is like, I'm, I'm so freaking proud and just humbled to be sitting amongst the people who are eclipsing you know uh the skills that we could have ever thought possible coming out of uh coming out of co-ops you know they're they do real work everybody as everyone's talked about you know i, I don't want to say day one we throw you to the wolves but you'll get in on real work really fast and um and you'll you'll do meaningful work for customers you'll do meaningful work for red argyle as a company um you know we're a salesforce consultancy which means we use salesforce for ourselves so uh, we basically manage our entire organization in Salesforce just as our customers do. And because we're a bunch of nerds, uh, we get to make it work the way that we want to more, more over than probably any of our other customers do. Within reason, we've got to pay the bills, but uh, we love having internal projects to be able to give to, uh, to arglers and co-ops here as well. You make a lasting impact on the day-to-day functions that all of our staff use we have we have a, uh, a guy that uh, wrote basically the, the the time entry system for you know for all of red argyle to try to make it as simple as possible um now everybody uses it every single day here at red argyle and it gives us a ton of valuable information uh, we're constantly tweaking how we manage projects and how we manage you know technical backlog how we get our work done faster there's tons of opportunities to contribute just with your own experience and and what you don't realize growing professional knowledge in your space. That's why y'all are showing up at RIT every day to learn some stuff, right? Well, br bring it to us because you've probably got some nuggets that none of us are even thinking of. And um, our, our goal here at Red Argyle is to try to make sure that those things can be heard. And I think everyone can has, that you've, that has spoken is kind of attesting to, you know, I really try to be are transparent here we try to be articulate here we try to be purposeful here and um, you know those are our those are our values in a nutshell um, and want to be able to create forum for you know for for people to be able to talk and add value here in ways that you know we might not might not know um, you know the uh, the I've, I've, I've joked with some co-ops they said you know well why should I come work here instead of insert giant company across the country in the Bay Area whose name is all too familiar to all of us i say because we do work for them too and in some ways our work is actually better because it's focused and you're surrounded by a bunch of great people to do it with together so um don't feel like you got to head out to the west coast you might have that west coast work right here in your backyard in rural candigo new york <clears throat> um i just wanted to you know uh, to point out and reflect on a couple of things that, that each of uh of grant and ben and Ben, and there's another Ben that works here. And if there are any other Bens that want to take a co-op, we would love to hire you as well because we just don't have enough Bens here. But um, besides that, uh, you know, Ben Mitchell, I think was our first official <laughs> co-op. I'm not sure. I think we may have had a had a short-term intern prior to that, and we said, you know what, doing an internship is just not long enough. Three months is over over a summer for your first time at Red Argyle. It's not enough time. Um, it almost is a disservice to the people that come in and, and want to learn. So Ben took the first long haul with us and we're so thankful to have him, have him come back and, and hang out with us and now bring other co-ops along. And, um, you know, Ben has really grown from just being a developer to like, I hate to sound corporate, but he's like, he's leadership material, you know, like he's, he's leading people in ways that are well beyond just like write code, do stuff. You know, he's really, um, He's really nurturing and embracing um, the skills and the gaps that people have and helping him fill it and helping him find a path forward. Uh, Grant talked about he was a, a, a nervous a nervous Nelly in his uh, in his interview and yeah he probably you know uh, came came across as a pretty intense place with with, uh, with some smart people. I think Ben Mitchell was and Ben Volger might have been there too. I can't I can't remember. Um, so yeah, you like triple teamed poor Grant and uh, I guess lo, you know lo and behold he still survived and came and worked with us and. Um, the, the it, it, exactly what he said you know I, I i see grant turn into uh you know again articulate not scared brave to take on work uh doesn't feel doesn't feel frozen like i, I i'm so thankful that red argyle was able to give him a space to you know basically turn into the person that uh, that he is today and um Ben Vogler is a freaking technical assassin. I don't think I've met anybody who's learned the platform faster and gone from zero to a hundred. Um, in his first couple of months over the summer when he joined us, he was he was coding entire new user experiences for really strategic projects that that we had at some of our clients. Uh, picked up the platform really well, which I think is a testament to both 
to three things to Ben, but also to RIT and what you all are learning there. You all seem like a bunch of intense, rigorous people. And then also the clientele that we're working with demand these kinds of things from us. So it's a great environment all the way around. Um, we, we feel really lucky to have the people who, uh, who have joined us, who've decided to stay, who are with us today, and who I hope I can convince to work here forever in the future, um, in addition to all of you who I haven't met yet. And um, sadly, I don't get to hang out with the co-ops as much as I used to. I, I have to schedule like 15 minutes here and there just to like talk shop, um, as I did with Kobe uh, a, couple of, a couple of days ago. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm imparting less upon all of you. I'm just the kind of the guy that cleans the floors here now. Uh, but I hope that, you know, what you can bring here is imparting, you know, to this greater thing that we're trying to make, which is called Red Argyle. So really appreciate all of, uh, all of your time today. Happy to take some questions. Okay, so we do have quite a few questions that have populated already. The first one's for Dan. So I'm not sure if you've run this already, Dan, but you've been here for two years. Does that mean you've done multiple co-ops at Red Argyle? If so, why did you decide to go back for your second co-op? Yes, um, I've actually done four co-ops at Red Argyle. I got permission from RIT to do extra co-ops. Um, I decided to go I decided to come back just because I love doing the work that's here. So, I, I also want to butt in here and, and say that he's somewhat lying. Um, he, he is amazing. Dan is a guru at everything he does. And uh, a, one of the strategic mentioned clients prior refused to have anyone but him. So Dan is the, the best. I'll leave it there. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pile on top of Dan's pile on on top of Ben's pile on and, and reiterate what Ben just said. The customer literally wanted Dan to stay, and uh, and again, just a testament to what the awesome work that's going on over here is. Like, what do you mean a kid in college should stay and 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 help us with this this customer? Of course he should because he's excellent. Awesome. Okay. Also, I heard Ben Mitchell talk a lot about employees like to work late, sometimes midnight, 3 a.m. If they choose to, what is the work-life balance at Red Argyle? Are working late hours somewhat of an expectation? I can probably answer this as one of those guys who's up at midnight, 3 a.m. Uh, doing coding. Um, it's not so much that you know we, we get up at 9 a.m. and then I'm coding until midnight or 3 a.m., but it's that stuff happens during the day or maybe my schedule just doesn't quite line up properly that I can get my work in at a, you know normal work hours so I just sometimes will pick up at like 2 a.m. and just do some coding finish up my work and that's something that I have found amazing about working here there's a ton of flexibility like if you can do your work at whatever time works best for you that's good you can go ahead and do that um, and that's not just like timeline flexibility too for I have ridiculous, you know, sleep habits. Um, like we, I've never felt like I have to work while I'm sick because we're given plenty of time off to take care of ourselves. Uh, I'm not one of these people, but if you're like a parent with a kid, you know, there's been plenty of, uh, flexibility given to people with kids working through COVID um, who have these ridiculous schedules themselves. Um, so everyone here is super caring and understanding and they know that individuals are individuals and if you need to change your work schedule for whatever reason, they are very accommodating. Yeah, I'll just add that uh, we actually track all of our time. So I have empirical proof that I almost never <laughs> work more than 40 hours a week. Um, usually if if you're so overburdened with work that you need to work 50 hours, the solution isn't to work 50 hours. It's to get help or, you know, we've, we've gone wrong somewhere else in the process. So I've never felt that expectation personally. So I'm not I guess I'll just take the next one. Oh, sorry, Becca. Uh, I'm up, but I just want to jump in on that too, because uh, I generally, I, I'm one of those people that has kids. So work-life balance, we try our best at Red Argyle to manage that. So I joke that my second shift starts after the kids go to bed and then I work nine to midnight and that works for me. 
today I know that I have to, I have taken an hour off the end of my day because I'm meeting with my lifting coach. So, I mean, all those things kind of, I thank Red Argyle for giving me that flexibility and I respond by giving them some of my extra time. Uh, next question. Do you hire remote co-ops? So I'm not a hiring manager, but I'm just going to speak like I am anyway. Yes. Uh, at least definitely right now that we currently have a co-op who's in Vermont, I think. I think Connecticut. Connecticut, whatever. One of those ones. Um, so definitely right now, yes. Um, in the past, it wasn't as much a thing, but who knows where the world's going. And that kind of ties into the next question of given the current state of the world, what does the remote workday look like? Um, for me, it's very flexible, I think. It's finding the time that works for you and communicating to your teammates is key. And I think for co-ops, that's kind of challenging to come into a new company and be alone in your bedroom or whatever and help <laughs> someone help. So we we have we try really hard with new co-ops uh, that are remote to give you like, like, hey, I'll be hanging out in this Google Meet all day. You can come in here and talk to me if you need something because I know sometimes it feels like you're alone when you're remote like that, especially starting out. So, I'll just throw out too that if for remote people today, the only people in the office that are presenting today are Danielle, me, Ben Mitchell, and everybody else is at home. So it's super common for arglers to be working from home, whether you need to because your home is in, you know, Philadelphia. Thank you, Eliza, one of our arglers in Pennsylvania or just because you know you're just not into the office today that's cool yeah I'm, I'm literally like a five minute walk away from the office right now <laughs> I'm still hanging out right here because this is what's convenient for me and how I'm comfortable working awesome so maybe this question's for Tom what is the origin of the name Red Argyle I really need to write this down sometime <laughs> uh, well, red is just a cool color, uh, so I won't, won't read too much into that. I, I used to say it was the color of passion, but I've since changed my stance on what passion means. So I guess maybe it's the color of purpose uh, to harken back to our values. Argyle, if you look at an Argyle pattern, it's, it's actually a pattern on top of a pattern on top of a pattern, um, depending on how sophisticated the, the design is. And going back to 10 years ago, and I didn't think this was going to be a Salesforce thing, and I thought it was going to be an information design, information architecture thing, um, that made a lot of sense. Lo and behold, we 10 years later, I still think our work is really in recognizing patterns, whether it's user experiences, data structures, uh, relationships with our customers, relationships with each other. Uh, there's a ton of uh, fabric that we weave in our, in our work day to day. And I can keep piling the puns on all day long if you guys need. So if you want to come here and hear them all day, just sign up now. What would the next steps look like during the career fair this year since we are not in person? So Becca, if you want to chime in. Sure thing. So um, we are planning to do interviews next week. Um, so uh, at the end of this, we're going to, we have another slide that has the actual job um, ID in simplicity and um, you guys are welcome to go there if you're feeling inspired and apply and um, we will be reviewing all of the resumes that we get that way and then um, asking people to sign up for uh, interview slots um, I actually have a phone call that I'm setting up with career services for tomorrow morning to um, confirm what slots we have for interviews and then um, we're hoping to have everybody signed up. I think our goal is by next Wednesday. Uh, so so it, I hope that I'm answering your question, Joshua. Um, once we confirm with uh, Career Services, then we'll be reviewing the resumes, and then people will be, um, we'll send you emails so you know that you can sign up for interview slots. Thank and you. yes, yes it is. Just popped in. Yes, all interviews are remote. Yes. Awesome. And yeah. given the flexibility in work hours, I'm sorry, who did I cut off? No, it's okay. I was going to take oh. that question. Um, Nathan, you're full of good questions. Um, I'd say yes, you, that is a 
a concern sometimes. Um, the, the general outline or, or guidelines here is that normal working hours, typically between you know eight and five, nine and five, is where you put all your meetings. And if you have time in that, in that area, that's typically where most people work, ideally, like uh, really. Um, that's where I work. I don't find myself working past five a whole lot. Um, and I get in the office usually like eight, nine o'clock in the morning. So that's, even though we have that flexibility, people still generally follow the, the typical working hours um, you know, outline. Yeah, it, I, it got a little bit fuzzy there for a while with with COVID, but like, because everyone was transitioning from maybe working in the office to working at home, and mm -hmm. and we had some hours um, there that were a bit weird, but you know we're we're pretty in line with everyone else. I tend to work more like ten to six, and you know it's I think most people do fall within those hours, so it's really not hard to get a hold of someone, but uh, it's more about you know just. If I have a meeting at nine, I'm going to get up at nine. It's kind of you know, just how it is. But, you know, you can always ask not to have that scheduled if it's possible. Uh, would you be considering spring, summer, double blocks? I think we always do double blocks. So that's preferred for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of Salesforce is really big. There's a lot to learn. <clears throat> so typically you get more time to learn, get more time to work. Um, and, and do really cool things. It's kind of lame if you if you just want to learn the platform and then have to leave and not do anything cool. We don't want we don't want that for you. So we, we want we want to um, provide a, a good experience, and I think that comes with a a double block. Um, historically, I think we found that the single block just is not enough time. Yeah, just to piggyback off of Ben's answer there, this particular job that we're um, Posting simplicity job ID one one eight four eight in case you're curious. Um, that's for starting early January and going through. Guys, what does it that go through August, right? Right. So that's yep, what yep. the particular job is. And if we haven't answered all of your questions, or you come up with questions later today, or you want to have a ten minute conversation with a live argler, please email. Danielle at danielle.fanto at redargyle.com or me. My name is Becca, Becca at redargyle.com. We'd love to set something up um, or answer your question, whatever works best for you. And um, this job that's posted in Simplicity right now, we're hoping to hire four to six more um, co-ops uh, to you know, help us out next, next year. I hope that we answered a lot of your questions and you feel like we truly did introduce you to the experience here. Can we post the Simplicity link in the chat box, please? Yes. Um, Danielle, can you do that? Yes, yeah, she's going to do that for us. Great question, Joey. And the last thing that I wanted to say is I heard Ben Vogler say that no one expects you to be a uh, superstar on day one. True, but I will say that I haven't met a co-op yet who hasn't done amazing work for us. And um, I think that speaks to not only RIT, but also their really great education that we do internally too. So uh, I look forward to checking out all of these resumes and thank you so much for your time today. And thank you Arglers for your time.